In front of me are drinking vessels with handles. The mug is the most commonly made handled vessel in North America for drinking from. And it's a wide variety. Every potter makes them and, and every uh, variety is quite different from one another. Um, this one by Chris Tyler from Nova Scotia is an earthenware one. One's forced to hold it in a certain way and uh, drink the coffee or whatever you have inside it um, in a com comfortable way. Some uh, a really large handle, very strong, vigorous, gutsy one like this one by Harding Black from Texas. Very strong handle. That's a man's mug, that one. As is this one by Axel Ebring, one of the pioneer potters from uh, Canada. A good stein, good handle, feels comfortable in the hand. You can knock back quite a lot of beer out of that one, I'm sure. Um, a small one here by uh, Lynn Johnson from Canada, wood-fired, uh, very angular, the form is, is triangulated in here and that reflects back with the handle. It's a nice, uh, nice mug to hold and drink from. This one here by Stephen Hill from uh, Kansas City has got a very vigorous, strong handle, good to hold, good to drink from too. And the handle is important because uh, we look at the handle in different ways. There are people that hold the, the mug. Some people have it with one finger, like this little one here. Some people prefer two fingers. Some people prefer three fingers. Some people put the thumb through the handle and hold it underneath. Some people turn it around like that. There's a whole different way of holding the handle. And in order to make the thing comfortable, um, you have to think these things out. There's always somebody who's going to use it in a different way to the way that you intend. And we go from, from mugs for coffee to tea and the teacup. The most common sort of teacup that we see around is an incredibly badly designed piece of uh, Victoriana where the handle itself, uh, you can't get your finger through it, so you're forced to hold it very tightly between the, the thumb and first finger. And to balance your hand out properly, you have to stick, stick your pinky up in the air. Uh, to do the job uh, in the pure British way. And it's very uncomfortable to hold. Nowadays we seem to have moved further away from that and make handles that we can in fact get our finger in. This relates quite strongly to the previous one in that it has a little thumb stop here uh, which isn't strictly necessary but it looks nice and it balances out the uh, pattern on this gay cup and saucer by um, Martha James from Canada. We also have the vestigial uh, little thumb stop on this one here. And another example is the lidded teacup, which is very common in the Far East, particularly in China. And it keeps the tea hot, very good idea. Uh, and another completely outrageous one is the lidded teacup here by Eileen Skye from uh, Texas, who uh, starts one's morning very joyously with a, a quick shot of espresso coffee in this. It would make me laugh and have a joyful day for the rest of the day if I drank my coffee from this one. However, the handle itself is not that easy to hold. And teacups like, or coffee cups like this one and uh, this one here, both by myself, are one finger issue objects. And we're gonna look at the way that these are made in the next little segment. A cup is essentially a small bowl with a handle stuck on the side, so it's made in much the same way. So we bear in mind the things that uh, we bore in mind when making a bowl. Compression in the foot, evenness of wall, and pull it up into what particular shape I want to make. So this is the basis of a cup, and cups can be tall and thin or round and fat. And since I'm round and fat, I tend to prefer cups that are much the same sort of shape as me. So that's basically the cup form that I usually make. And I just pinch that top section a little bit there, so that it's thinner at that very, very top edge that fits between the lips for comfort in the process of drinking.
is trimming the foot on the cup to finish it properly at the bottom. Making it the right width so it will fit the depression in the saucer. I try not to cut these feet too deep in here because a lot of people get very annoyed when they fill up with uh, water in the dishwasher. I have to think of everything in this business. So that's basically the form of the cup. And now I have to stick a handle on it. And we'll just stick the handle on. there to there. Take one of the handles. Stick the top side first. and then bend it over my thumb so that uh, I get the right size space in that negative space in the middle. If you do it over your thumb, um, as the clay shrinks, there's still enough space to get through, get the finger in there, so that it should feel comfortable in that space there. You don't need too much space, but you don't want it to be too tight either. I'm about to make the saucer part of the cup and saucer set. Once again, fair amount of compression down and centering thoroughly down. Make it good and wide and pull it out a little bit more. And I like the edge of the saucer to match the edge of the plate. So I make a small edge on there. Then gives it quite a easy hold when you're actually holding the cup and saucer together. And then we need a depression for the cup. And I use my trusty uh, credit card for this or a, an old ruler or something. The credit card is about the same width as the average depression for the foot of a cup to fit in. So that just goes there like that. A little bit of cleaning up. That's all. The foot will be about twice as wide as the uh, that depression, but we'll see that in the trimming stage. I'm just going to trim this uh, saucer and to make it more convenient and get it the right sort of height I can put it on a chuck. It's just thrown at the same time as the saucers were thrown. That just sits on the top there and uh, I just have to tap it to uh, center it. Once it's centered then I can just trim whatever excess I have away. One important thing to remember about the width of the foot on the trimmed saucer is that uh, it has to be wide enough so that the things will stack properly. If you make the foot the same sort of width as the depression is in the inside of the saucer, it will be very tippy. If you have a stack of them, they'll fall over very easily. So by making the, the foot of the saucer approximately double the width of that uh, um, cup depression, um, you shouldn't have any problem with the stackability of them. And since these aren't big, they don't have to have a double foot as a plate might have. A single foot is, is perfectly satisfactory to fulfill the needs of the object in its functional use. So that foot's now finished, and I'll put it on top of this other one, and then I'll, just for demonstration, cut the two of them in half so that you can see that the way that the foot stacks.
one foot should be above the other foot and the two uh, cup depressions should be above each other that makes it easy to stack if the foot was here they'd wobble all over the place because the foot would be sitting on top of the uh, um, the, the uh, cup depression